So we're looking at the millennium here tonight, by God's grace, preaching outside uh, behind my house due to the uh, flooding there in the church. So we read Revelation 20, verse 1, verse 2 says, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Notice four titles, right? Or, four, or three titles in one name. Uh, we'd say maybe his name is Satan, but he has these titles, just like God is Father, Son, Holy Ghost, but there's one name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So he falls for a thousand years. What a awful, uh, we'd say, punishment. But of course, that's what he deserves. Verse 4, here's where you and I come in. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. And don't forget 1 Corinthians 6. You'll judge the world. You'll judge angels, the Bible said. If we can judge the little matters amongst us now and do it the right way, the Bible said we'll judge the world and we'll judge angels. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, like St. Paul, and for the word of God, other saints that died, for the word of God which had not worshipped the beast. That's where you and I come in right there. We did not worship the beast. We don't, Brother Ram says you don't have to be beheaded to be here. You just have to overcome the beast system. Neither his image, which is the World Council of Churches, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. That's the doctrine of the, the false church. Or in their hands. Brother Ram said that's doing the will of the Antichrist system. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Praise God. Amen. Verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now let's read verse 6 on 3. 1, 2, 3. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. May God add his blessing to reading of his word. You can be seated. Also, my wife said there's uh, some bug repellent back there. We got some bugs down here, you know. I tried to shoo them away, but of course they come back. You know, I don't know, something, something about them. They want to be down here. So, by God's grace, we'll look here at the scriptures on the millennium. I appreciate you coming out here in our makeshift church here, by the grace of the Lord. Uh, I got a lot of things uh, uh, I'll probably save for the video some of this will be uh, new to you. Some of it will be reviewed. So I'll try to kind of have a sense of how you feel about this. So I want to give a disclaimer. You know, there's no thus saith the Lord from Brother Branham on this topic. So that's why a few of the statements I'm going to say, you know, might be different than what you've heard Brother Branham say. Uh, particularly if you listen to questions and answers 64. Uh, so there's no, but there's no thus saith the Lord on it. Um, so we know it doesn't pertain to salvation. Now, another thing Brother Ram said, it was uh, the millennium was hard for him to understand. How many remember that? It was in uh, Questions and Answers uh, Part 2. They asked Brother Branham, I'd like to know more about the millennium. Is it after the marriage supper or on the earth? All about it. I don't understand about it. And Brother Branham says, well, brother, sister, it's hard for me to understand it myself. So this was a topic he was, uh, he would say the word presuming. He was presuming about this topic. Uh, for uh, for certain things. Other things he got exactly right. But I want you to see there's no thus saith the Lord and it was hard for him to understand. There's another quote where he says, they asked Brother Branham, are there going to be children in the millennium? He says, it, it looks a lot like there will be. He said, but it looks like a lot let there won't be. He said, I don't know. He said, if the Lord lets me know, I'll tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So um, I want to read this quote. This is a beautiful quote. Oh, yeah. Sorry, brother. Thanks. Sorry. Sorry. Hopefully it wouldn't fall off the nail there. By God's grace. Thank you, Malachi. In the Church Age book, chapter 7, Brother Bram says, The foolish virgin will miss the millennium, which you can begin to see by these truths, is much more important and wonderful than we have ever thought or believed. So if you believe the millennium was important before, I think after tonight you're going to see it's more important than what you thought it was, because that's what I found out. When I started reading the scriptures and, and it started connecting, wow, all these scriptures about, they have the same idea. All nations coming to worship in Jerusalem. When I started reading these things, I thought, wow, this is more important than I thought. 
And then I found out it's more wonderful than I'd imagined. <laughs> so if you think the millennium is going to be wonderful now, wait till after this sermon. Hopefully it's more wonderful to you. Because hopefully you'll read new scriptures in a new light by the grace of God. That's what I found as I've studied this. I've put numerous hours into studying this. So let me tell you this. Why is it so important? I believe it's important because eternal positions that God ordained for you and eternal purposes become reality. In other words, you become there what God always meant you to be. Mm-hmm. Here on this earth, sometimes it feels like there's disappointments, doesn't it? You know, we can't, maybe we don't accomplish what we think we should accomplish, or uh, you, you, know, you want good things to happen to Christians, right? You think, oh my, I just think this Christian, they ought, to, they ought to have better than this, or they ought to have a better life than that. But in the millennium, everything is brought back to its original design, the plan of God. God's eternal position for you, you'll have it there. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Bram says your eternal purpose, you'll have it there. Brother Bram even says if you married the wrong one here, he says you'll get the right one there. Mm-hmm. Now that goes back to whoever your spirit, your, your soul was connected to in the mind of God <laughs> before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Like Adam and Eve, their souls were one, well, their souls were one spirit, right? And then God broke them apart and they come back together. So that's quite a thought. And remember, church, God's word does not return void. Whatever God's word promises, you will receive it. Amen. And it also brings this to light, too, you know, the eternal per- position and purpose. The eternal position of Jesus' 12 apostles was to rule and reign over the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm-hmm. And Jesus said they will have that in the millennium. Amen. Imagine Peter will reign over one of the tribes. Maybe it's Manasseh. Maybe it's Ephraim. You know, mm-hmm. maybe it's Judah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Peter will reign over one of those tribes. He'll, he'll uh, rule over them and tell them what to do and where to live and, and how, to, how to live and what their jobs will be. Peter will rule over one tribe because that's what, God, that's what God's purpose always was. Mm-hmm. right? God gave him the keys of the kingdom, but not just that. There was an eternal purpose behind that, that he could rule over people in the millennium. Praise God. Amen. God always saw Peter as a ruler, mm-hmm. as a leader. Hallelujah. Although it didn't look like it when he, when he denied Christ three times. right? It didn't look like he was a real leader. <laughs> But the Bible said Jesus comes to wash us, hallelujah, and justify us. And he comes to empower us and fill us with his spirit. Praise God. So see, church, here we might not look all the time uh, uh, how we're going to be in the millennium. But in the millennium, we'll have all the positions, all the purposes, all the rights and responsibilities will be restored in the millennium. Hallelujah. Now, why is it so wonderful? Because we'll witness this earth, the same earth, except with a new outside part, right? With a new renovation of the outward part. New trees and new grass and new leaves and everything. New plants and everything. Mm -hmm. We'll witness the earth, but we'll also see fallen man ruled by perfect divine love the way it was originally meant to be. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so wonderful. We're going to see the the, the earth and the earth systems as it ought to be. Brother Ram said, he said, when we get to millennium, it's going to be just like we live now, except no planes, no automobiles. Mm -hmm. None of these government buildings or something like that. You know, none of the... Uh, none of the trains, he said, because we'll be able to travel like a thought. Amen. Praise God. If you've got a glorified body. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's so much more important than we can even think now. And it's also so much more wonderful than we can even imagine now. <laughs> a thousand years where we'll never get tired. We'll never run out of uh, things to do. We'll never feel bored. How many looking forward to that? Amen. Praise God. Never, <laughs> you, you'll never lack anything. Praise God. Mm-hmm. You, you'll... And the Bible says in one place, before you make a call. Now, the Bible doesn't say this is to God or to a friend. Before you call, the answer will come. That's what I'm looking forward to. Hallelujah. I don't even got to ask for anything. I just got to think about it, and then there it is. It's right there. Hallelujah. Oh, this is better than any movie they could make. Hallelujah. We've seen lots of crazy movies, you know, well, when we were sinners. Not all of us, you know. Thank God. We've seen lots. Of, some of us saw lots of movies, but they could not even come close to how wonderful the millennium is going to be for Christ and his bride. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the inspiration came, as I said, since January. I've been reading through Genesis. Now I'm in, uh, what am I in now? Romans? No, I'm in 1 Corinthians. And I'm just uh, uh, transferring all my favorite notes and Bible studies, like in my Bible, over to my new Bible. And I came across Zechariah 14, Isaiah 2, Isaiah 11, Isaiah 65, Jeremiah 3, Micah 4, I came across all these texts and something stuck out. They all said, all nations will flow into Jerusalem. Many nations will flow into Jerusalem. The wolf will lie down with the lamb. Right. We, always see, we always see pictures of lions laying by lambs, but that's not the word of God. The Bible says the wolf will lay down with the lamb. 
So see how we even, you know, even people's art, even artists need corrected by the word of God, right? They have one idea about uh, the millennium. Now, it may be a lion lie down with a lamb, but the Bible calls it a wolf. So after reading all these things, I was just blown away. And uh, I'll try to bring these out. I'm going to briefly go through these uh, five points. What's the millennium? When is it? How do we get there? Now, the main one for me, number four, what happens during it? I have so many uh, new thoughts about that from the scriptures I want to share with you. I think it will encourage you by God's grace because that's what we're living for. How many living for the millennium? Amen. I'm, I'm trying to reign over sin now that I can reign over cities later. Amen. If I can reign over the sin nature of Jesse Smith, then Jesus promised me I'll at least reign over one city. Hallelujah. If I'm a one-talent preacher, then I, maybe I'll get two cities. In fact, actually, maybe I'll get two cities. If I can just reign over this one this one uh, sin nature, God will give me two cities to rule over by God's grace. Mm -hmm. We see that's plain from the scripture. Jesus doesn't lie. He doesn't tell fables. Hallelujah. Amen. He tells the truth. Now, this is all review, but Brother Bram said the 1,000-year millennium is the everlasting righteousness on the earth. This is one of the six purposes of Daniel's 70 weeks from Daniel 9, 24. The six purposes are, uh, are determined... Okay, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision, and to anoint the most holy. That's the six reasons Gabriel visited Daniel in Daniel chapter 9. The fourth reason was to bring in everlasting righteousness. That's the millennium. Amen. So that's what it is. It's everlasting righteousness. Now the people, there's going to be all kinds of, we'll see, there's people from all over the world who are going to cover this world. And we're going to have to bring in righteousness. If they won't do the righteous thing, we'll, get, we'll make them do righteousness. Mm -hmm. We'll make them because we'll be rulers. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And we've already proved we can rule right now. So that's why Jesus can trust us there. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. To rule in righteousness. Make them do right. Now, Brother Bram said Jesus, think about this. When Jesus was tempted three times by Satan, the reason he didn't give in was because he knew he was going to fall heir to the millennium. Mm -hmm. How many remember Brother Bram saying that? <laughs> Jesus said, I'm sorry, Satan said, he took Jesus on the mountain and said, all these are mine. He says, I'll give them to you if you worship me. And Brother Bram said, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. He knew he was going to fall heir to them in the millennium. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. See, even Jesus overcame sin by looking to the millennium. And friends, that's what we can do tonight. We can overcome sin and we can think, no, I'm not going to fall to that because I want to rule in the millennium. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to fall into this because I want to rule in the millennium like my Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus used that as motivation. Oh, he's trying to give me these kingdoms now, but I don't want him in this condition. I'm going to get him in their perfect condition. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Ram said the millennium proves the price for sins has been paid. Brother Ram said the man that's going to live through the millennium, 1,000 years, and it shows the penalty has been paid. Man lives forever. Because remember, uh, was it uh, Methuselah? Was the, the one who lived the longest, 969 years? No man ever lived a thousand years. But church, if we're faithful, if we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, we will live longer than Methuselah and our bodies will never get older, tired. Hallelujah. Amen. Because Jesus prayed, paid the price. He paid the penalty for our sin. And so we re receive His life. And then he rewards us for living a life to glorify him. And he rewards us with a thousand year lifetime. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, of course, eternity after that. Amen. Brother Bram said, Jesus is the son of David. He said, and in the millennium, he'll sit on the throne of David. Hallelujah. And that's why the Bible said he's given the key of David mm -hmm. or the responsibility of kingship during the millennium. Brother Bram said, it's Jesus who bring in the millennium after the battle of Armageddon. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Bram said, in the millennium, he comes as son of David to sit on the throne of David, king. So what was he, member on earth? He was prophet. Right now, Jesus is priest, but he's going to be king. Hallelujah. Amen. Prophet, priest, king, son of man, son of God, son of David. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And then Brother Bram says, when he's in the millennium, he'll sit on his own throne. Right now, Jesus sits on his father's throne in heaven. Jesus said, he that overcometh shall set with me on my throne as I've overcome and set on my father's throne. So isn't that amazing? Jesus is on the father's throne now. But when he comes down here, he sits on his own throne. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that's his reward. That's his reward for overcoming sin. He gets his own throne. And church, that's your reward too. You get your own throne. You get to rule 
on this earth. And I don't know how it works out for sisters. I don't know how it works out. I don't know how it works out like that. But the Bible says if you overcome, you get to sit with him on his throne. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible said in the millennium, he'll be son of David. Hallelujah. Now, Brother Bram also says the millennium is the honeymoon. They asked Brother Bram, will there be people on the earth in corporal bodies during that time of the millennium? Yes, sir. We will have our glorified body eating, drinking, and building houses. See, I'm not going to build a house here. I'm going to build a house there by God's grace, <laughs> as far as I know. Hallelujah. He said, just, he says, just living just like we do now for a thousand years. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. But there, you know, there's not going to be these mosquitoes around, right? I believe it by God's <laughs> grace. And if there are, you got power over them. Hallelujah. <laughs> you rule over there. Amen. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. So living, think about that. Just like we live now, except in a glorified body. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Praise God. Um, and that's what I'm living for, right? That's what we're, what Brother Man said, that's what you're living for. That's what you're dying for, right? You're dying so that you can be rebirthed in a brand new body. Hallelujah. Reborn in a brand new body. Hallelujah. Brother Man said, the millennium, it's a thousand years. It's a honeymoon for the bride and groom. So again, the rapture is the wedding ceremony. The millennium, I'm sorry, then we go to the, the, the wedding supper in the sky, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then we come back down here for the honeymoon, a thousand years with Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, that's all familiar. Brother Bram also says the millennium is the seventh day. There were six days of creation, right? The first day, second, third, fourth, uh, fifth, and then six. But then the seventh was interrupted by sin. So Brother Bram said God wants to get his day back. He wants to get his, uh, his seventh day back. And Brother Bram said it's going to be a thousand years. It's called the millennium. So we get the seventh day back. He teaches that in the future home. If you want to look at that. And then 2 Peter 3 8 says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. One day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and the thousand years as one day. Think of that. When we get done with a thousand years, we'll say, Wow, that was a great day. <laughs> I, I can't wait for day number two, mm-hmm. right? You get done with a thousand years, and that's just day one. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's day one. And then you go into uh, the future home, start day two, and it's just an eternal day. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. <laughs> it's amazing. This might be new to you. Brother Aaron said the millennium typed the Feast of Tabernacles. Remember there are seven, uh, seven feasts of Israel? How many remember that? Yes. Passover was typed by, I'm sorry, the Passover was a type. The anti-type was the cross of Jesus. Unleavened bread was a type. The literal thing was Jesus going down to hell, mm-hmm. right? To preach to the spirits in prison, get the keys of death and hell. The third feast was first fruits. That was, that was a type of Jesus' resurrection. The fourth is what we're in right now, the Feast of Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks. Mm-hmm. Right? That was the baptism of, I'm sorry, that was the day of Pentecost. And the fulfillment was the church ages. Amen. Sorry? Uh, number five was uh, the Feast of Trumpets. That's, a, that's, a, uh, that's fulfilled by the two Jewish prophets. And then six is the Day of Atonement. That's fulfilled by the 144,000 being sealed. The seventh is the Feast of Tabernacles. That's when they lived in the, uh, the tents for, uh, for, for seven days. And Brother Bram said the fulfillment of that is the millennium. Amen. And then the eighth, day after the, the eighth day after the seven days of Feast of Tabernacles, Brother Bram says that's the future home. There's a holy convocation. That's the future home where the pyramid-shaped home comes down to earth. Heaven and earth is eternally united. Praise God. Amen. Amen. My, it's so beautiful. So many wonderful teachings in here but i'm going through these fast because you've heard them probably over the years when is it brother Bram said the millennium is after the battle of armageddon because armageddon cleanses the earth for a thousand years hallelujah it's also a space of time brother Bram said time keeps going during the millennium time is still kept track of and and as we're going to see there is sin during the millennium now brother Bram said there wasn't sin but remember he didn't have thus saith the lord on it but if you look at these scriptures, there is sin during the millennium. But Brother Bram does say there's sin after the millennium. Mm-hmm. So we know there's sin before. We know there's sin after. So uh, no doubt there's sin during the millennium as well. And let me read that where Brother Bram says that. Just so you got it. I must have misplaced the quote, but I'll find it here in just a moment by God's grace. Yeah, it's in uh, Questions and Answers Part 3. Brother Bram said, Now the millennium is not the new heavens and the new earth. There will still be sin after the millennium. So we know there's sin before the millennium. There's sin after the millennium. So no doubt the scriptures teach there's even sin during the millennium. But it's not our sin. Right. How are we looking forward to that? A thousand years, you never sin. Amen. Never fall short of God's glory. You're never ashamed. No more guilt. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. 
No, no, no more questions. No, no more personal condemnation, right? Mm. Nothing like that. Amen. It's just perfect peace for a thousand years. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, you all, you're all familiar with this. You know, uh, in the millennium, or right, right before the millennium, there's a, a holy fire. Uh, Peter says there's fervent heat. The earth burns with fervent heat. It just burns the outside of the earth, not the inside. And then Malachi 4.1. Let's, let's get your Bibles ready here. Now we're about ready to start reading here by God's grace. Karis, you want to get Malachi 4, 1? You want to turn there? It's right before Matthew. Malachi 4, 1, 2, and 3. So after the battle of Armageddon, Armageddon, God looks at the earth, and it's like he's going to put the earth in an oven. You sisters know about the oven, right? It gets pretty hot in those ovens. Amen? You brothers might too. Karis, you got it? Malachi 4, 1. Can you read that? Yeah. Stubble. stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Amen. Verse 2. Darling, you want to read that? Verse 2. Thank you. Unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the soul. So he's talking about, of course, to Israel. Now, you know, you know he's going to transfer over later in these next few verses to the spirit of Elijah. That's not for tonight. That's a message I've already preached before. But notice, Jesus is going to bring healing. So he's going to bring fire all over the earth. It's going to burn like stubble. Like we, we, got, a, we got a pile of uh, sticks back there. And every time we burn it, it's just a pile of ashes, right? Well, the earth is going to look like that after the battle of Armageddon. But Jesus is going to rise upon the earth and heal the earth. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful thing. Verse 3. Sister, who would you want to read verse 3? And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. Hallelujah. So, Brother Ram says the, the battle of Armageddon purges the earth. It cleans off the earth so Jesus can step on the earth. Right? Amen. Jesus is not going to step on this earth until it's burned over with fire and cleaned out. Amen. Remember, he comes down, he meets us in the air. Right. He actually doesn't touch the earth. He purchased the earth with his blood. Hallelujah. But he's not going to touch the earth with his corporal glorified body until the earth is burnt over and all the sin is burnt off it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, again, I'm skipping a little bit here by God's grace. Now, how do we get there? This is very familiar. You know this. But you must receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in your souls. And then if you do that, you will reign for a thousand years in the millennium. Because when you have the Holy Ghost, you'll overcome the beast system. Remember, you'll overcome his image, his mark, his name. You'll overcome uh, the beast system. Mm -hmm. Now, church, you might not think that's a big thing, but think about all these people that are trapped in denominational churches. Right. The, uh, you know, I've seen different preachers, you know, they kiss the Pope's ring. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, they, they bow down and kiss his feet. And uh, there's this one gentleman that had these evangelical meetings. 20,000 people there. Lou Angle was his name. And he and he 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 apologized. He brought these Catholic priests out there, and he apologized for being against the Catholic Church because they were Protestants. And he literally kissed their shoes. That was a number of years ago, probably five or ten years ago now, but already. But most, see, most people are going back to the B system, right? You saw Candace Owens; she's going back to the B system. All these people are going back to the mother harlot. So see, there is something wonderful inside of you. There's a power inside of you. There's a spirit inside of you that won't let you ignite. Or unite with that beast system. Why? Because the spirit of Christ is against the beast. It just right, goes back to the beginning, right? It was uh, Adam and Eve against the beast, right? The serpent. The battle with the serpent from the beginning is the same battle at the end. We're still overcoming the beast system. Hallelujah. But we do it by the spirit of God. Like Brother Ram said, the last Eve won't fall. Amen. Amen. The first Adam and Eve fell, but the last Eve won't. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. She'll overcome. Amen. Because she's more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, so notice, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be beheaded to be there. You just have to not worship the beast. In other words, you just have to worship Jesus Christ and have a testimony of the word of God. And you have to avoid worshiping the beast, his image, his mark in their foreheads and their hands. That's all you've got to do. Now think about this. Even John, the revelator, he wasn't beheaded. Right. And how many think he's going to be there? Amen. Some people think, oh, you've got to be a martyr to be there. No way. You think God's going to keep John out of there? Right. The beloved, mm -hmm. the one who leaned on his bosom, mm -hmm. the one who wanted to be closer to Jesus than everybody else? Right. Of course not. That's his beloved. 
And so, see, uh, Brother Man says these are just different descriptions. H- however, you however you overcome the beast, it doesn't matter. As long as you overcome the beast, you'll be in the millennium. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So if, if John will be there and he died by natural causes, we can be there too. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. They asked Brother Branham, is, are, are these part of the bride, past, or future? Brother Branham said they're the bride completely, both past and now. Everybody say now. Ready? Now. 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 So Brother Branham, Brother Branham reads Revelation 20, verse 4, and he says they're the bride in the past and they're the bride right now. Hallelujah. Oh, my. It's beautiful. <laughs> hmm. Now I have to sk- skip some of these. Uh, Sister Lena, do you want to read Romans 5, 17? You want to get that? And then Haven, do you want to get... Um, Haven, 2 Timothy 2.12. Romans 5.17, 2 Timothy 2.12. Whenever you're ready, Sister Lena, uh, uh, Romans 5.17. Okay. 5.17? Yes. For as by one man offense, death, reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Amen. So how do we reign in life? Jesus has given us, God, I'm sorry, given us a gift of righteousness. That's the Holy Spirit, Amen. right? How are you righteous? Not by your righteousness, by the, God's righteousness, right? Amen. So how do we get there? We got to have the Holy Ghost, and that means you reign in this life by one Jesus Christ, Amen. right? And you remember when you were a sinner, sin reigned over you, right? The Bible said sin reigned over your mortal body, did it not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you're, you know, if you remember that, well then, praise God. Now you can see. Sin doesn't reign over me anymore. I reign over sin. Amen. I'm bringing my body into subjection to the word of God. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Glorious. So that's another way to say it right there. That's another way to say how you overcame the beast system. You reigned in this life over sin. And then Haven, 2 Timothy 2.12, huh? whenever you're ready. If we, suffer, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So how can we reign with Christ? We have to suffer with him. Right? So that God is going to bring us through sufferings. It's not all uh, pleasantries. Right? Brother Ben said, we're, when we came a, a Christian, we didn't come to a picnic. He, saying, he said, we came to a battlefield. How many of you understand that by God's grace? Right. And sometimes we go through trials. We think, why am I going through trials? Did I do something wrong? Well, it could be. Or it could be God is just training your character to suffer so you can reign. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that's what he says. You have to suffer in order to reign. Now, we see it in America with rejection of our family. That's where we often see it. Like, I often use Brother Amen as an example. He's rejected. He's kicked out of his house. I mean, that's truly suffering uh, for, for being a Christian, right? And now, some of us, we may suffer with natural sickness. Some of us may, may suffer with other things. But the point is, God's going to let us suffer. But I love what, you know, Haven shared with me and Lydia, Isaiah 43. I'm going to turn there real quick. I love what they shared. We are going to suffer, but look what God promised. If he promises to Israel, how much more the bride? Verse uh, Isaiah 43, 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Ever feel like life's going to overflow you and you're going to drown in all your your busyness and all your trials? Mm -hmm. Ever feel like that? Mm -hmm. God said, I'll be with you. When you walk through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Sound like, sounds like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. Hallelujah. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, verse 5, fear not, for I am with thee. Mm-hmm. Verse 7 says, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Mm-hmm. So this is the scripture that really encouraged me when I was going through my threats that I had to receive. <laughs> Maybe that's the suffering. Hallelujah. I don't know. I, I felt like I suffered, that's for sure. Okay. So I just put that in there that reminded me of that verse there. So we reign in this life. We suffer in order to reign. Mm -hmm. We have to have the right character. So the only way you can have real character is to suffer difficult times. Then you'll know how to act when those things happen again. You might fail the first time, but by God's grace, you won't fail the second time. Hallelujah. I'll know know the next time when that comes around. Hallelujah. (laughs) Amen. We sit with Jesus and we judge. The Bible said we'll judge angels, we'll judge the world. To him that overcometh, Revelation 3, 21, will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Hallelujah. Amen. And then Revelation 24, again, they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Hallelujah. Because they overcame during their lifetime. Now here's the most wonderful part of the sermon, hopefully, by God's grace. Get your Bibles ready. I'm going to need some Bible readers here, by God's grace. What happens during the millennium? Now I've already said some of them. 
The first thing is we the the uh, sorry the most holy place is anointed. The second, third things they have to bury all the soldiers from Armageddon. Remember, uh, Russia, China are listed in there. Uh, the the ten tyrants of the earth, so probably North Korea, some other ones in there, Syria probably. Uh, and then they got to burn the weapons. So think about all these tanks, right? We see these tanks and planes. They have to burn those during the millennium. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a lot of fire. Right. right? And it's gonna, the Bible says it's going to take years to burn their planes and all their guns. Mm-hmm. Years. And then, this is for you and I, we're going to build, plant, and inhabit. And then we're also going to be part of some worldwide worship services by God's Amen. grace. Oh my, I can't wait for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Again, I want to be on the side where Brother Brooks is leading songs, okay? <laughs> Brother Brooks and Brother Amen. My God's grace. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, what does anoint the most holy mean? It means Jesus comes in and he sits on the new millennial temple in Jerusalem in the holiest of holies. But church, don't fret. There's no veil in that temple. Hallelujah. Because the veil has already been torn. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we'll be able to approach the throne of God. We'll go from the outer court, the inner court, and we'll see Jesus in the holiest of holies. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we'll already have an exalted position. We're already kings and priests unto God. Mm-hmm. Right? We'll have a way in. We'll just have a, a, a way in there already. Now, the sinners, they'll have a different process. They actually have to bring animal sacrifices. We're going to see it in the scripture. Mm-hmm. If you haven't read Ezekiel 40, chapter 40 through 48, read that. You'll see all these things the heathen have to do in order to worship. Amen. So right. if he, it's the end of Ezekiel. The last chapter is 48. So, Ezekiel 40... To 48. And Brother Adam said, any Bible reader knows that's the millennial temple. <laughs> and I, I felt bad, Brother Austin. I, was, I didn't know that. <laughs> Brother Adam, I thought I was a Bible reader. I realized I'm not really a Bible reader. <laughs> In other words, I'm just a young Christian. <laughs> but Brother Adam said, any reader should know that. Well, I'm, I'm not much of a reader then. By God's grace, he's going to help me though. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, we'll probably skip over that one. Um, <laughs> Brother Adam said, notice, anoint the most holy. Brother Adam said, Jesus is already anointed. How many know that? Yeah. Acts 10, 38 already said Jesus is anointed, was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power to do signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. Jesus don't need anointing. It's the temple that needs anointing. Amen. Right. And that temple gets anointed when Jesus comes in, he says. Mm-hmm. He says Jesus is already anointed. Is that right? The book of Acts said that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> the most holy place is a sanctuary where God lived between the cherubims. And this time, Christ will set in the most holy place with the anointing on him. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, if you haven't read it, Brother Ram said, any reader knows that from Ezekiel, the 40th chapter, until about the 44th chapter, is nothing in the world but the millennium temple being erected on earth. Anyone knows that, see? <laughs> yes, sir, Brother Ram. That's right. Anyone knows it? Well, that, that, that's, that's perfect because I'm, I'm a nobody, right? <laughs> Anyone knows that? Well, I'm no one. So that, that fits me by God's grace. Now, I showed you this a while ago. I'm, uh, let me see if I can just show it to you. Ezekiel Temple looks like that. I mean, it's, I'm not, you're not going to be able to see it very long, but it's just a, it's a massive, massive temple because all the nations of the earth need to have time to come in there, worship and sacrifice. And it's much larger than... Um, any other temple. So here, I'll point. Down here in the green is an American football field. And that's the Ezekiel Temple. Remember this picture I showed it about a year ago? So how many football fields can get there? Probably like 10. That's a football field. And then that's the Millennial Temple. Just imagine how large it is. How many thousands of people. Football field, Ezekiel's Temple. That's in uh, Ezekiel 40 through 48. So the green one is American football field. And that's the Millennial Temple. Just the massive size of that. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. And in their church, you're a priest. Amen. And the church said, Amen. <laughs> right? You don't have to be born out of Levi. Mm-hmm. You just got to be born from heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. It don't matter. Your natural birth doesn't matter. Your spiritual birth is all that matters. Amen. Hallelujah. You get to be a part of that. A priest unto God. That millennial temple is only 750 feet wide. Anybody remember how many miles wide uh, the length is of the New Jerusalem? 1,500 miles wide. 
So the Millennial Temple is only 750 feet. Oh, I'd like to measure that out sometime. Maybe after service I'll measure that out. But the New Jerusalem, so it's, it's only 14% of one mile, right? But the New Jerusalem is 1,500 miles length of it, right? Brother Bram said it's from Maine to Florida. That's just one side of the, of the, New, of the New Jerusalem Temple, praise God. Hallelujah. So there's no comparison how great that is. Okay, now, got your Bibles there? Let's read about bearing soldiers and bearing weapons here. Uh, who would like to read here? Sister Zer, do you want to read that? Sister Zer, do you want to go to Ezekiel 39, 9? And then I'll give Sister uh, Hua, I'll give you a verse there. Sister why don't you go to Isaiah 65, Sister Hua? Uh, 65, 17. And then Sister Zer, Ezekiel 39, 9. So let's first read about bearing bodies and bearing weapons. So Sister Zer, could you read 9 and 10? And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the hand staves and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years, so that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any out of the forces. For they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoil them, and rob those that rob them, saith the Lord God. Amen. Verse 12, if you skip down to verse 12, I'll read that. And seven months shall be the house of Israel be bearing of them that they may cleanse the lands. Mm -hmm. Seven years of just burning the weapons and seven months of bearing the bodies, mm -hmm. right? So God's not just, God's not just going to send out holy fire and burn up all the, the Russians or the Chinese or the, Amer I don't think America will be existing at that time, but in other words, anyone who comes against, anyone in the B system who comes against Christ, God's not just going to burn them up with fire. Right. Some of the, Their bodies will be stubble, but they still got to bury those, right? The Bible said the earth will be a stubble. They still have to bury them. They're going to have something to do, right? They got to they gotta live, right? They got to inhabit. They got to start all over, right? All right. Thank you, sisters there. Now here is, uh, remember, Brother Man said, living just like we do now. We get to live now. I'm sorry, however we live now, we're going to live there except in a perfect condition, a holy condition all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, sister, here's where we see um, a lot of things in here. Why don't you read uh, 17, 18, and 19, sister? For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. <laughs> but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem, a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Amen. We know Jerusalem and Israel is not in a happy condition right now, right? Because of all the war. But God promised it will be a rejoicing city. Hallelujah. There will be happiness there. And did you catch that in verse 17? We won't remember this world, right? We won't remember uh, the United States of America and all their corruption. Or all the corruption in Ghana, right? We won't, we won't remember all these corrupt systems anymore. Uh, it'll be out of our mind. We'll just have an awareness of this is Jesus' kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. We're a part of the, the Most High God. We're a part of His kingdom. We're kings over the land. We're priests unto God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at verse 20. There shall be no more fence an infant of days, nor an old man that shall not fill his days. Amen. So see, there's not going to be an infant who dies. Or an old man that doesn't get to live out his years. See this? Mm -hmm. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. So see, uh, it seems like the least amount of time a person will live will be a hundred. That's what it seems like from the scripture. So God's going to protect them and give them good lives. Remember, they, they got good rulers to rule over them. Praise God. Hallelujah. They got good rulers, maybe good doctors by God's grace. <laughs> I mean, whatever, whatever eternal knowledge God equips us with. All the children will live to a hundred. Hallelujah. And if now look, a sinner, and if a, a if a sinner dies, if a, a sinner dies a hundred years old, it's going to be like they're cursed. Mm -hmm. so, oh, what happened? They only got to live a hundred. We had a thousand years. Right. They had a thousand years to live. Verse twenty-one: They shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be any uh. Sinful animals taking our produce, right? They're not going to sweep in here and take all of our, 
gardens that all the garden that you planted by God's grace. No, if you build it, you're going to live in it. If you plant it, you're going to harvest it, praise Amen. God. It's going to be just the way God intended it. How many looking forward to that by God's Amen. grace? Think of a house, Karis. Think, hey, even think of a house. You can build it by God's grace. You got a thousand years to do it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 22. They shall not build and another inhabit. Thank God. No one's going to take over my house. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. <laughs> a thousand years. You get to enjoy your property for a thousand years. Amen. Hallelujah. Long enjoy. Oh, this is the best place. I've always said I, I love mountains. I like some mountains and I like a lake. or I don't know if there's going to be lakes, but I sure would like a lake. I guess I could probably build one by God's grace or dig one. I could dig one. Verse 23. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. See, nothing's going to be wasted. Everything you do is going to be perfect. Let of the Holy Spirit, praise God. Amen. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. Hallelujah. Malachi, Jen, Zion, all the rest of mine, you're going to be there with me. Hallelujah. My seed, my offspring. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here it is, verse 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I'll answer. Amen. <laughs> I would say, uh, I need some timber. I'll go, I know, I'll already, I'll already be here. <laughs> Thank God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Before I even call, Brother Austin, he'll already answer. Amen. Brother Jess, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> Hallelujah. See, while they're speaking, I will hear. Hallelujah. Amen. So even, even fellowshipping with the Lord right now, that's amazing grace right there. <laughs> wanting, to, wanting to fellowship with God or talk to the Lord or ask the Lord a question. I'll reach out to call. It's just like, you know, your cell phone. You're going to pick up your phone. Oh, he's, there's the answer's already there. <laughs> you got it. Even before you can text, you already got the answer there by God's grace. Oh, it's beautiful. Verse 25. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullocks. So I think that's why they put the lion by the lamb, because it's in the same scripture. And dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. And the church said, Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Now, here's one that was brand new to me. So, uh, uh, Haven, you got some reading there? Wait, did I? Did you read already, sister? Did I? Okay, you did? Oh, thank you. Sorry. I don't want to skip anybody. And Brother Austin, you got a Bible, brother? Yeah. Alina's got one? Okay. All right. So, Brother uh, Austin, why don't you get Zechariah 14, 16. Zechariah's right before Matthew. So, if you find Matthew, it's a book right before that. I'm sorry, two books before that. Malachi, Zechariah 14, 16. Zechariah yes, sir. 16. Yep, Zechariah fourteen sixteen. So as I was reading these last, you know, six months, I've been reading through the Old Testament and everything. I kept coming across these same thoughts about going up to Jerusalem to worship. So, brother, could you read uh, 16, 17, and eighteen? Yeah. Um, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king. The Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles, and shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up, and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Amen. How many uh, shocked by that statement there? There's going to be parts of the world that, that I wonder if we'll control it, right? Because Jesus controlled nature. There'll be parts of the world that will not receive rain because they don't come up to worship Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, friends, this has not been fulfilled yet, right? This was written, uh, what's the verse there? Uh, Zechariah 14. Well, this one must have been, what, 400 years before Christ? Yeah, almost 500 years before Christ. You know, after this, Israel never had a king that everybody came up to worship. It hasn't been fulfilled. Right. This has to be the millennium. This has to be Jesus the King. And did you see that in verse 16? Everyone that's left of all the nations. So there's some people, you, you know those movies about living through Armageddon, right, Brother Austin? Yeah. So that's, that's from the Bible. That, that's real. Some people are, when God burns the earth over, maybe they're, got their, maybe they're camped in the ground. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they're in caves. The Bible said they'll be in caves. Some of them will be in caves calling out, from, calling out to the Lamb. But some of them, there's going to be some people left over and they're going to, but just walk out into ashes, right? And they're going to see Jesus heal the earth and heal the nations. Hallelujah. 
And no, no, notice, there'll be no rain if you don't go up to worship Jesus. And there's going to be plagues. Now, Egypt's going to get a good reminder of plagues. They already got some plagues. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Jesus is going to give them some more plagues if they don't come to worship. Yeah. Right? And now look at verse 19. This shall be what? The punishment. See, there's punishments during the millennium. Mm-hmm. Because there's rulers. And if you don't follow the rulers, you get punished. Mm-hmm. This is the right way the earth should have always been. And the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. All nations. See, the whole world. Imagine that. The whole world is going to be required to come and travel to Jerusalem. Verse 20. In that day there shall be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. So look, we're going back to the horse and buggy days. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. I don't know what that means, but verse 21. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord. Oh, they'll all be set aside. That's right, for holy purposes. There won't be anybody be getting drunk there. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And notice, and all they that sacrifice. So look, animal sacrifices. So as much as we love our animals, right, there's going to be some animal sacrifices. God is going to reinstitute this so the heathens of the earth understand what Jesus did for them. Right? It's going to be a literal, it's going to be a type and shadow. And there's the anti-type right there, Jesus Christ. And they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein. And in that day there shall be no more of the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So I don't know what that means. Maybe God destroys that whole nation, you know, in the I'm sorry, in the battle of Armageddon. I don't know. That's a good thought. I'm at 46 minutes, so you're doing a, a good job here by God's grace. All right, next one is Isaiah chapter 2. So Lena, do you want to read that? Isaiah 2 and then Haven, Question. Jeremiah 3. So Isaiah 2 and Jeremiah 3. And then nature, get your Bible ready by God's grace. Uh, Sister Lena, it's Isaiah 2, verse 1. The word, that, the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Why don't you read down to verse, can you read all the way through 4? Yeah. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted, exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. And we will walk in his path, for out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord shall, the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among nations, and shall rebuke, rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. hooks. Nations shall not lift up the sword. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Amen. Thank you, sister. Verse five says, "O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord." That's where we get that song. We'll walk in the light. Such a beautiful light. Now, we do it spiritually when we confess our sins. The Bible says spiritually walk in the light, Mm -hmm. right? But here's the literal light. We'll walk in the light of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The light of his glory shining upon the nations. (laughs) Hallelujah. So see, verse 2 said, all the nations will flow into this. This, I, I showed you that Ezekiel house, 750 feet wide. All the nations shall flow in and they gotta go out a separate door, the Bible said. They can't go in the same door they came. Hallelujah. That's a good type there. In other words, like church, you shouldn't leave the same way you came to church. Right. 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 If you're down or discouraged, don't leave that way. Hallelujah. Right. Right. It's a great literal uh, fulfillment of what we experience spiritually, praise God. Right. I'm not going to leave here discouraged. I'm not going to leave here depressed. Right. I'm not going to leave here sad. I'm not going to leave here in sin. I'm going to leave here purified by the blood of Christ. Right. Hallelujah. Right. I'm not going to go out the same way I came in. Right. And notice, he, he has to teach them their ways in verse 3. He has to teach these heathen nations that made it through Armageddon. He's got to teach them their ways. And the, the and out of Zion shall go forth the law. Zion's been hearing his name in all the songs. He's been getting excited about that. <laughs> you got a powerful name, buddy. Hallelujah. Mount Zion. City of the great king. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So he's got to teach from his temple. He's got to give the law so the people know the law. And notice, he shall judge them. And you catch that that she read in verse 4? Rebuke many people. So Jesus will rebuke many people. I imagine we will too because the Bible said we'll rule with a rod of iron. In other words, we'll slam down that rod, right? This is how it's going to be. We'll rule with a rod of iron. And then no more wars by God's grace. Amen. Thank you, sister. Wonderful reading. Haven.
Jeremiah 3, 16 and 17. Can you read just those two verses? And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land, in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall they be done, neither shall that be done any more. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Now they shall they walk any more after the imaginations of their evil heart. Amen. Wonderful. This was not fulfilled in Jeremiah's day, right? Because they still wanted the Ark of the Covenant. Even today, the Temple Institute, that's the name of the Jews who are trying to get ready for the third temple, right? Mm -hmm. They're getting the red heifer ready. They even have uh, an Ark of the Covenant. Even current Jews have an Ark of the Covenant. But Jeremiah said they're going to no more say the Ark of the, of the Covenant. Why? Because the King is there. Hallelujah. Amen. They don't need the Prince of God in an Ark because Jesus is the Ark. Hallelujah. He is the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. They won't need an ark. They'll have Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember, all nations. Again, look at all these, look at these phrases. All the nations shall be gathered into it. They'll all come to the throne of God there in Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Now, nature, Micah. Micah might be hard to find there. Micah chapter 4. And then Karis, Isaiah 11. Micah 4. And then Isaiah 11. Obadiah, Jonah, Micah. Obadiah, Jonah, Micah. Nahum. Karis 11. Uh, Isaiah 11. Okay. Sharing the Bible. Amen. Micah 4, verse 1. You got it? Yeah, you read uh, Micah 4, 1 and 2. Awesome. Everybody see the same thoughts? Jerusalem, flowing, all nations, worshiping, learning the word of God. Everybody see that? All the same thoughts as all these other verses. Isn't it awesome how God scattered his truth all over the Old Testament? It's scattered all over there. But as I was reading just this year, I came across all these and wrote them down in a notepad. I'm like, this is a sermon right here. Hallelujah. This is our future. Amen. Amen. We are going to see this. Hallelujah. Amen. Not somebody else. Our eyes will see it. Praise God. Amen. Verse 3. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And look at that. Jesus is going to rebuke all the nations far from Jerusalem. Like maybe North America. Right? South America. Mm-hmm. Australia. All these nations far off from Jerusalem, Jesus will rebuke them from his throne because they don't come to worship him. And they shall beat the swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Remember, Lena read that? Pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree. Think about, think about that. You're going to find your tree, you're going to find your vineyard, and you're just going to go sit under there and enjoy it. <laughs> Amen. You're going to take a few minutes off by God's grace. And none shall make them afraid. Look at that. You'll never be afraid. Hallelujah. There'll be no fear there because Jesus is king. For the mouth of the Lord of the hosts has spoken it. For all people will walk, everyone in the name of his God. And we will walk in the name of our Lord, our God, forever and ever. Because remember, at the end of this thousand years, Satan's going to deceive almost everybody on the earth. So see, they might even have their own gods. Right? But just keep them secret. But if they don't come up and worship, they might be worshiping their gods. If they don't come up and worship, they're going to have no rain. They're going to have plagues. Hallelujah. So again, no need for the ark. The king is there. And then remember, Satan will deceive them all at the end. That's Revelation 20, verse 8, and bring them to Gog and Magog. All right, great reading, nature. Um, All right, Karis, uh, Isaiah 11, verse 6. Can you read uh, 6, 7, 8? And the calf and the young lion and the fattening 
Fatling? Fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones, and shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the ass, and the wended weaned weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice. That's a snake. So there you see, suckling child. You see, there's infants in the millennium, mm-hmm. still nursing. There's weaned children that just get done nursing in the millennium, mm-hmm. right? So there's births in the millennium, yeah. right? There's babies in the millennium. There's little toddlers in the millennium. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. They're multiplying, right? It's a time to be fruitful and multiply, right? In a perfect world. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 And a little child shall lead a young lion and a fatling together. Haven, we might get to ride lions in the millennium. Hallelujah. We might. We've always talked about riding a lion, you know, because of uh, Aslan and Narnia. We might get to do it. We'll lead them at least. The children will lead the lions in the millennium, the, the young lion. Verse, look at verse 9. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, my. God's word is going to be everywhere. Amen. Everyone's going to know the word of God. Either they're going to accept it and obey and come and worship, or they're going to reject it and suffer punishments, rebukes, and plagues. Hallelujah. So here, notice, church, here today people can, it seems like they're getting away with all their sins, right? If any place should have plagues, it's California, New York, right, Chicago. (laughs) Yet they still got water and they still got, you know, they should have plague upon plague. But that's because this is a corrupt kingdom, hallelujah. But the coming kingdom, hallelujah, all rights all wrongs will be made right. Hallelujah. Amen. Every punishment will be poured out instantly, right? If they don't come and worship, no rain, plagues, punishment, rebuke, because it's the right kind of civilization, Brother Bram says. Amen. It's not an unholy civilization. It's a holy civilization. Amen. Brother Bram said, there will not be this kind of a civilization in the world to come. There will be no automobiles or nothing that science has ever done. There will be no such things in the world that is to come. But it will be God's own type of civilization that he'll set up in his glorious reign. Hallelujah. That's from God's Power to Transform, 1965. (laughs) Amen. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I want to read that quote for you just so you can see it. Or hear it. Brother Branham says, yes, uh, Brother Branham. Okay, let me, sorry. Oh, yeah. Brother Bram, will there be children during the thousand years of the millennium reign? That's the question in my mind that I told you the other day. I don't know. It looks a whole lot like it could be. It looks a whole lot like it couldn't be. I'm going to be as honest with you as I know how to be. I don't know at this time. I don't know whether there'll be, there will be or whether there not be. I can't say. Hallelujah. See there, Brother Bram was learning, right? He's going by the scripture. He's seeing all these scriptures, but he doesn't know for sure. But as, as, as I've showed you, I've showed you how many verses and, you know, and all these Micah, Jeremiah, uh, Isaiah, Zechariah, all these witnesses, they all say the same thing, right? And so we can see there's going to be birth, there's going to be death, there's going to be sin, but there's going to be a holy, righteous, everlasting kingdom. Hallelujah. Now I'm trying to find a place to close here by God's grace. So just in summary, there's births, there's death, there's sinners, there's children, there's families, there's infants, there's marriage. If you want to write this down, Ezekiel 44 says Israel's going to have natural people too. And uh, the priests have to marry certain type of women, right? Remember that? Ezekiel 44, 22. So Israelis, the 12 tribes, remember they're getting ruled over by the 12 apostles. There'll be animal sacrifices, Ezekiel 42, Ezekiel 43, Ezekiel 44, Ezekiel 46. The millennium will have survivors from Armageddon. We read that. The millennium will have plagues as punishment. The 12 apostles will judge the 12 tribes. That's Matthew 19, 28. Israel's priests will judge the earth as well. Ezekiel 40, 46 and 44, 24. There will be a time for burnings of weapons and burials from Armageddon. We saw that. There will be answers before we call. Hallelujah. There will be saints ruling up to 10 cities with rods of iron in glorified bodies. That's Luke 19, 17, Revelation 2, 26 and 27. Romans 8.30. Because the Bible said, He whom God has justified, God has already glorified. Amen. How many justified here tonight? Amen. If you're justified, you've already promised, I've got a glorified body waiting for me. Amen. And that's how you'll reign during the millennium. In a glorified body. 
Remember, Jesus' glorified body, it walked through walls. Mm -hmm. In John 20, 19, the Bible said they shut the doors for fear. And then the Bible said Jesus appeared to them. Mm -hmm. So he just walked through the wall. Mm -hmm. Then also, he showed himself down at the uh, Sea of Galilee, right? And he ate the fish. Mm -hmm. they said, ha he said, have you here any meat? Oh, there's a deer out there. Oh, there's some good meat out there. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> have you any meat? And they gave Jesus some fish. And Jesus ate the fish, right? In a glorified body. So that's what we'll have. We'll have glorified body. We still get to enjoy the tastiness of nature. Hallelujah, right? Talk about organic food there. Hallelujah. We're going to have some real, real organic food there by God's grace. <laughs> no man science. And they're not even going to come to their mind. Hallelujah. And friends, no more Ark of the Covenant because the Lord is there. In fact, that's the final verse of Ezekiel 48, verse 35. said they're going to say no more uh, we we're going to go no more of the ark of the Lord because the Lord is there. Jesus is there in the holiest of holies. Amen. Oh, we're looking forward to that by God's grace. Let me find a, a place to close here. I've read you this quote before, but listen here. Chapter 6, Church Age book. Brother Ram reads the verses about how we'll have rods of iron. He will have power over the nations. Think about that. Some of the saints, I imagine Paul will have power over nations. Paul, because he sacrificed more than anybody. Brother Bram says, He that who keeps doing his works faithfully until the end. See, church, don't give up when times get hard. Don't, don't stop doing the right thing. Always do the right thing. Because Brother Bram said, If you keep, keep faithfully doing it until the end, you'll be given power over nations. Yeah. Yeah. Even if nobody else does it in the church. You keep doing what's right. Now, hopefully our church will do what's right, right? Yeah. I'm just saying, if nobody else does right, you do right. Because you're, you're going to be given power over nations. And Brother Bram said you'll be a strong, capable, unbending ruler. Mm -hmm. Brother Bram says, who can cope so powerfully with any situation. Mm -hmm. Right? So if a hundred-year-old dies, you can, you'll know right what to do in that situation. Mm -hmm. Right? If, if, a, if a family won't go up and worship, you'll know right what to do in that situation. Mm -hmm. Because God's given, he's already given you that authority. He's given you that anointing in a glorified body. But the way you get that is to do what's right right now. Amen. Keep doing what's right. Remember Jesus said, increase your works. That's, how, that's the secret of Christianity. Keep increasing your works. Don't do less for Jesus. Try to increase it. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Bram said, even the most desperate enemy will be broken if need be by you in the millennium. Amen. The most desperate enemy, right? Egypt, right? Because Egypt's going to deserve plagues. Some, some Christians are going to have to deal with Egypt. And call plagues on them. See, but you'll have the character that's proven. God will be able to trust your character because he can trust you right now. Amen. 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 Right? His demonstration of rule by power will be like unto the very Son of God. Brother Bram said, this is very amazing, he says. <laughs> Amen. My. Unless we suffer with him, we cannot reign with him. You have to suffer to reign. That's the reason for this is that character is simply never made without suffering. Character is a victory, not a gift. Mm. Hallelujah. A man without character can't reign because power apart from character is satanic. But power with character is fit to rule. Amen. We just saw another mega preacher this week fall into some sin. and he had to, He's been pastoring 48 years. He has a worldwide ministry all over the radio and internet. And he, had, he said, I had a sinful... Uh, sinful act years ago but it wasn't illegal so that tells us what it was it was probably adultery or something like that and after 48 years of everybody looking unto him he's this leader he falls see he doesn't have the character right right he doesn't have the character he might have had it for a few, for a number of years but at some point his character uh it failed because he wasn't born again he lets his daughter preach his daughter's a preacher mm -hmm. see that's not character that's fit to rule right. a woman is to be silent right, right. According to the word of God. Yes. See, this just, again, proves to us, no matter how big a kingdoms these people have or big influence, what matters is Christ-like character. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is watching. Hallelujah. Amen. And see, a man that doesn't have the real Holy Ghost, his, you know, that, that satanic influence is going to catch up to him. It's going to catch up. And Brother Bram said he won't be sitting on the Father's throne. But we want to have the character where Jesus can trust us to sit on the throne. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Brother Bram said, all wrongs will be made right in the millennium. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's ever done you wrong, 
If anything's happened that's wrong, in this case, he's talking about marriage. If anything's been done wrong, he said, all wrongs will be made right there. That's why this is such an important time. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. If we can do everything, everything in our power now, just follow Christ. He'll make everything right there. We'll have the, our ordained position, our ordained authority, everything God ordained us to be, will fulfill it in that land in the millennium. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Let me see. Anything else here I want to bring out? I think that's it. Let's stand to our feet by God's grace. Did you enjoy that? Yes. Hour and five minutes. That wasn't too long. Hallelujah. I preach, I preach an hour and a half uh, Thursday night at, at uh, Junction City. <laughs> by God's grace. God bless you all. Oh.